Welcome to Naked Spirituality, a video blog series of Sacred Attention Therapy and the Center for Human Awakening. My name is Rob Meager. For more information about Sacred Attention Therapy, the Center for Human Awakening, and our video blog series, please visit our website at www.centerforhumanawakening.com. And Center is spelled C-E-N-T-E-R. These video blogs support one of the Center's core activities, which is collaboration and partnership with individuals, communities, and healing centers practicing personal growth and spiritual development. And our guest today is Joyce Cooper, and we will be talking with Joyce about her work through Enlightened Teaching for You. And I'd now like to invite Joyce to come on screen. Good afternoon, Robert. How are you? Hello, Joyce. It's nice to be with you. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining me. It's my pleasure. <laughs> I'm looking forward to speaking with you about enlightened teaching for you. And I looked at your website uh, and we'll have an opportunity to share with those listening and, and watching your website address as we, uh, as we proceed in our sharing today. But there was a biography and it's just very brief on your website and I want to read it um, because it's intriguing in a number of ways and it's, very, it's fairly brief. It, it shares the following. Joyce Cooper has spent the past 30 years working with children in various capacities. She is a 16-year veteran public school teacher. Joyce is in the process of publishing her first book, or it may already have been published, Enlightened Teaching, Elevating Through Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Joyce has assembled a team of educators, therapists, and social workers to bring you the best possible service to optimize your organization. And I would like to begin, Joyce, talking about enlightened teaching for you by asking you, why did you want to start enlightened teaching for you? Well, I'm a public school teacher okay. and I'm 48 years old. However, my career began as a vocational Bible school teacher the year I graduated high school. Okay. And so I have really been interested in spirituality since I was about 12 years old. Okay. And um, the reason why I was interested in spirituality is because I grew up Baptist. Okay. However, some of the teachings did not resonate with my essence, with what was in me. Mm -hmm. And so as I became a public school teacher and I continued to and still do teach vacation Bible school, okay. um, work with various mentoring groups have in the past, mm -hmm. um, doing a lot with children. And I decided to become a teacher when I was working as a paralegal. Okay. And a lot of our clients were involved in the juvenile justice system. And that made me feel like I was in a reactive situation instead of proactive situation. So I decided to become a public school teacher. Mm -hmm. And uh, the team that I have assembled, these are all individuals who are transcending. Um, and the reason why I use the word transcending is because they are spiritually minded and they are practicing mindfulness in various forms. And they share my belief that in order for us to heal the world, we have to take more of a mindful, spiritual approach to working with our youth. That's the only way we're going to heal our world is if we address the spiritual part, which is our core belief of that's what's lost right mm. now. Mm -hmm. Now, you, um, you're very intuitive because I wanted to ask you next, what purpose or, or niche does your educational initiative serve or, or fill? Well, I'm going to tell you it. When I think about my work done in enlightened teaching, elevating through Maslow's hierarchy of needs, mm -hmm. it is our belief that everybody is meant to reach self-actualization and that 
it's missing a lot in education because children are often judged on something that weren't created to be, which is why our society is experiencing a lot of disconnect. Um, the best way I can describe that is when we think about how gardeners work with multiple intelligences, hmm. um, if I'm created to be, let's say, an intuitive, and I'm being judged on my on math and language arts, I'm, I'm going to be a C, D, or F student there. But if I'm judged on my ability to have excellent interpersonal and intrapersonal skills, which a lot of intuitives have, then I'm going to excel. And so that's our niche and our motivation because everybody is created to be excellent in something. It's just that our school systems don't address that mm -hmm. to no part of their own, mm -hmm. but it's just the way that it is. Joyce, the initiative is called Enlightened Teaching for mm -hmm. you. Why mm -hmm. Enlightened Teaching for you and not just teaching for you? What, what is enlightened about Enlightened Teaching for you? I'm laughing because it's, um, we call it Enlightenment because what we're looking at our service providers, parents, anybody who's working with you. We're trying to get them to take more of a mindful approach okay. into their their interactions with children, mm -hmm. to their delivery of instructions, to delivery of services. Um, it's intriguing for me, and, and, and was start what started the intrigue was my first year of teaching when I had a five-year-old diagnosed with bipolar disorder. Okay. And um, that was eye-opening, awakening, um, and it started my mission to understand more of the brain development, more of spirituality, more of education, and how these things come together. Um, we, are, we are in a critical stage in human development. Our youth are crying out for us to lead them in their decision to transcend and elevate what has been. They're more accepting, they're not dogmatic, and to be honest with you, they are extremely vocal about their beliefs. And uh, when I think about it, they're no different than you have always been. I was telling some students last week that youth have always been instrumental in change. Yes. Um, we as adults need to accept what they're deciding for their world and join them, lead them so they don't have to make as many dis mistakes as you know we may have made in the past. Mm -hmm. um, they're really beautiful beings. I love children because number one, they keep you energetic. They keep you on your toes. Um, they make you think about things in ways that you never would have thought about. However, I, at the core of everything that they're saying, what I'm hearing more than anything else is a return to their core essence, which is an identification mm. with fine. They're just not verbalizing it that way or expressing it that way. Yeah. And if we're able to help them, then we will have less repairing to do when they become adults. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Joyce, how is this initiative being received? Um, if I understand correctly, you're on the east coast of the U.S., uh, mm -hmm. South Carolina or North Carolina? South Carolina. Okay, and and as with anywhere in the world, it comes with its culture, um, mm -hmm. its own belief systems. Uh, of course, religion, spirituality, or the absence of can play a part in that culture. Mm -hmm. It feels to me, uh, and it's certainly welcomed 
uh, for me to hear about the work you're doing. But it feels to me like you're offering something um, very new. And how is that being received in the area that you're living and working in? Well, I know that it is new and different. However, um, there are quite a few people who are receptive to it. And there are quite a few people who are not. Because a lot of times people are looking at spirituality and mindfulness as something that is counter to what they're already doing. However, if we think about Jesus, mm -hmm. people believe in Jesus as the Messiah. But when we look at the person that they're believing in and things that he practiced and uh, his walks of life, mm -hmm. it is actually what Jesus would do. It's actually Jesus' actions. Because Jesus practiced mindfulness. When he said to Peter, Peter, you will deny me. When he said to Judas, you will betray me, but I forgive you. He was mindful enough. He was intuned enough to his disciples, mm -hmm. to himself, to the future. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing different. It's just that we are advancing ourselves and a little bit of um, a deeper understanding of people who are instrumental in our belief systems. And that's how I like to try to put it, because um, I have been interested in Jesus ever since I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. It first started off as being interested in Jesus as the Messiah, but then mm -hmm. I became interested in Jesus, the person and how he lived. And really, he was a man of action. He was a man about mm. what are we going to do to live here and now. And and I, I'm going to be honest with you. I studied the Bible intently for a very long time. And I tell um, people who say, well, you don't look like you're 48. Well, when people might have been partying, no, nothing against them. Don't get me wrong, because people's lives are what they were. But when they were doing some of the other things, I was really into spirituality and trying to understand different things. Mm -hmm. And it led me to an understanding of who Jesus was, mm -hmm. what his work was about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm encouraging people to look at Jesus more in depth. Don't look at the breath. Don't look at the icing on the cake. Let's look at the ingredients. So when they look at the ingredients, what they will see is what I'm saying is actually the same things that Jesus said. We just sometimes leave it out in mm -hmm. our teachings. Mm -hmm. A beautiful teacher he was indeed. Mm -hmm. A beautiful teacher. Um, Joyce, why have you decided to integrate therapists and social workers into the framework for your educational system or initiative? What, what role do these therapists or social workers play? Um, this is an excellent question because people depend on therapists a lot. People depend on social workers a lot. Social workers and therapists are very instrumental in helping people to re-re-member their essence. And I'm knocking, not knocking therapists, I'm not knocking medicine or anything like that. But at the end of the day, in all of the people I have spoken with throughout my lifetime, they all return back to their essence and that is their identification of who they are and their essence of God. And I've never believed that the potter wants to put us back together again. I always believed that the potter intended us to be the way that we were created. It's just that other people interfere with the potter's work and then we become broken. I don't think that was the potter's intention because the potter has other things to do. The potter doesn't want to go back and have to 
remake something because when you go back and put something together again there's always something lost and so if we can approach our youth because i mean children as young as four and five needing a therapist um children who are constantly displaced if we can help them remember their god essence if we can help them understand that people in our lives make decisions because they don't know any better or because there's some healing that needs to take place um we all have to send that message everyone who's involved needs to send that message parents need to receive that message and um i'm on i'm realizing now that more parents are asking for direction because they actually don't have it and um i didn't i didn't grow up i like to say i grew up in the middle of the road my mom was divorced and so she taught us a lot about love she taught us a lot about forgiveness um she taught us how to be my dad's family they were very instrumental in our lives and they were in agreement with my mom's decision to divorce my dad and they were very instrumental in our lives and as i look at our children they don't have what i had growing up i had the knowledge of what it's like to be in a single parent home so i'm able to identify with that but i'm also able to pay forward what my dad's family did for us because they were in our lives and it wasn't until a few years ago that i realized how important identity is for children mm. and they gave us identity and i didn't understand that they were giving us identity and that's what helped uh, my brothers and sisters and me to be solid individuals because of the community that came together Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Joyce, if people wanted to reach out to you, if people wanted to contact you, follow up, uh learn more about enlightened teaching for you, uh how can they reach out to you? Is there an email address? Is there a website that they can follow up with you? Yes, they can go to www.enlightened e n l i g h t e n e d teaching for the number 4 y o u.com okay. or they can reach me at e t the number 4 y o u at outlook.com. Wonderful. We'll make sure that that contact information is scrolling in the credits at the end. Joyce, I want to thank you for being with me today. I feel blessed for having had this opportunity to speak to you and learn about enlightened teaching for you and um I wish you all love and blessings with your initiative. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. The pleasure has been mine. Okay. Namaste. Namaste. Bye-bye.